Keys. Today, I'm here to take you on a brief tutorial to walk you through how to log into your Chromebook and also how to access Google Classroom. By now, you should have had the opportunity to log in to your Chromebook. To log into your Chromebook, you will need your username and your password. Your username is going to be your first dot last name at gscs.org and your password will be your student ID or your lunch number. By now, you should be logged in to your Chromebook and at this moment, I am now going to walk you through how to access Google Classroom. Now that you're logged in, now you need to get to Google Classroom. To get to Google Classroom, you will do the following steps. I will now share my screen with you to walk you through that process. Now that you've logged in to your Chromebook, you are going to notice at the bottom that you see various icons. First, you can click on this Google Chrome icon and it is going to take you to a Google Chrome web browser that looks similar to this. From there, you are going to go to the top of your web browser and you are going to look for the Google Classroom icon. If you see that Google Classroom icon, you will click on that icon and it will take you directly to your Google Classroom. If for some reason you do not have the Google Classroom icon, you are going to come up and you're going to open up a new tab and you are going to type in classroom.google.com. This will take you directly to your Google Classroom where you will see all of your classes. From here, you are going to pick your class based upon your schedule. This here is my class, so I will now click it to enter into my teacher's Google Classroom. From here, there's a couple of things that we need to learn and know with Google Classroom. The first thing you are going to see is going to be your stream. Please check your stream daily as your teacher will provide important updates and announcements on your stream. So just take a second to scroll through your stream and read those announcements. Next, I'm going to show you how to access your classwork tab so that you can access an assignment and turn it into your teacher. So next, I'm going to click on my classwork tab. When I get to my classwork tab, I am going to see topics to the left. I am going to click on the topic that corresponds with the day of the week or whatever day I am currently working on. Since today is the first day of school, Monday, August 17th, 2020, I'm going to click on that topic. As you can see, that topic is already ready for me to go. The first thing that I'm going to do now that I've opened up my topic for Monday, I'm going to complete my daily check-in. The daily check-in form is going to be very important because this is how we will take daily attendance. You will click on this daily check-in form provided by your teacher and it is going to take you to a Google form that you will fill out to provide your teacher with information. Go through your daily check-in form answer any of the questions that your teacher provides for you, and then you will hit submit. Now that we have taken attendance for the day, we're ready to rock and roll and access our assignments. So you're gonna go back to your classwork tab and to access your assignments, you are going to click on your daily agenda. Your daily agenda will be your guide to accessing all of your assignments in Google Classroom. Once you click on your daily agenda, it will open in a different tab. On your daily agenda, please make sure you check the date and make sure that it corresponds with the day of the week that we are currently on. So today is Monday, August 17th, the first day of school. Once you get to your daily agenda, you are going to look for your assignment. My teacher has told me that I have to complete a math assignment. So I'm going to scroll through my daily agenda and I'm going to go down until I find math. So I see that I have math here. It tells me to log into my Google Meets 
for a number talk. From there, I would then click on the icon and it will take me directly to my Google Meet. To complete my assignment, it tells me that I have a Google Classroom assignment. So from there, I am going to click on the Google Classroom icon to access my assignment. Now, my assignment says math about me using numbers. So let's click on the Google Classroom icon and visit that assignment. So now that I'm in Google Classroom and I'm back to that classwork tab, I am going to find the assignment that says math about me. I will then click on this assignment and I am going to be able to complete this assignment. So it will take me directly to the assignment in a different, in a different tab. You will work your way through your assignment and complete it to the best of your ability. Now you are ready to turn in your assignment to your teacher. So you are going to go back to Google Classroom and you are going to go to View Assignment. And from there, you are going to go to the upper right hand corner where you are going to see your work and you will see that it is assigned to you and you are going to turn it in. Once you turn it in, your assignment will be pushed out to your teacher and you are ready to go back to your daily agenda and move on to the next assignment. I hope that this tutorial has been very helpful for you and I hope that you have a fabulous first day of school. Thank you and have a great day. We're so excited to have you here. And because we know you're anticipating meeting face to face with your teachers and your classmates, we want to give you a tutorial on how to use Google Meets. Google Meets will be the platform where you're able to interact with your classmates and your teachers on a daily basis. So there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. First of all, to join your Google Meets face to face sessions, your teacher will send you a unique link or code that will take you directly to that Google Meets that they have planned for you. Again, a few things you want to keep in mind during your Google Meet session is first of all to choose an area that's clear of any distractions. You want to be sure that you're able to think clearly and engage easily with your teacher and your classmates with no distractions and no noise in the background. Secondly, you want to be sure to mute your mic. So you see I have several participants, several students in my Google Meets today. Notice each of them has a red mic and it's showing red because those mics are muted. You'll notice a line through those mics as well. And you see that for me right now. If I were in that classroom, my mic would be muted. If I click that mic, it gives me an opportunity for my teacher and my classmates to hear my voice. So unless my teacher asks me to unmute myself, when I join my Google Meets live face-to-face -face sessions, I want to be sure that I keep myself muted until my teacher asks me to unmute myself. Another thing you want to keep in mind is to leave your camera on. Right now, I can see all of my students' faces. I know that they're engaged in my learning and in the lesson and instruction that's taking place. So be sure that unless your teacher tells you otherwise, you leave your camera on. Also, a few other features just to make note of in Google Meets is if you do have a question for your teacher, instead of unmuting yourself and speaking out, you can raise your hand through using this emoji in the top left-hand corner. So notice my student Leslie has already raised her hand. So the teacher will be able to see as soon as you click that emoji with their hand raised that you have a question and they'll begin answering questions from there. Finally, one other feature that I wanna show you is the chat box. There is a chat box for you to type in questions regarding your lesson to your teacher. For instance, you may wanna type, hey, do we have homework tonight? Look, I already have a student asking that question. That's a perfectly logical question to be asking your teacher. That question focuses on the lesson and instruction. This, the chat box is not a feature that you're going to use to chat with your friends. It's specific questions to the teacher that you may have. And she can answer via the chat box or simply answering with her unmuted mic. 
So again, I hope that this tutorial has given you just a few ideas of what to expect on your first day of virtual learning when you're able to meet face to face with your teacher and your classmates. Good luck. Hello, Griffin Spalding County School System parents and students. The Infinite Campus Parent Portal is accessible from a mobile app on your phone or from our website. Download the mobile app called Campus Parent or Campus Student from your, stone, your phone's app store. Or if you want to visit our website at spalding.k12.ga.us, scroll to the bottom of the page and click the Infinite Campus link under Quick Links. Next, select Campus Student if you're a student, or select Campus Parent if you're a parent. If you do not already have a username and password, then click the link under Announcements to create your username and password. If you ha already have a user account, but you've forgotten your username or you've forgotten your password, please click the link to have your password or username reset. After you log in, You'll see announce, uh, excuse me, assignments. And if you have more than one child in your family, you'll be able to uh, select and toggle between your students there. You'll also see grades for each nine weeks for each course. Gradebook updates will show you any recent updates teachers have made to their gradebook. Attendance will show you. Uh, absences and tardies and early early releases from each class. The schedule tab will show you the child's schedule for each term. And if you click the course title, you can see the name of the teacher and the teacher's email address. You can see all the report card grades and assignment grades for that class. And you can see any upcoming assignments that are due. On the Documents tab, you can see report cards for your child. And if you click More, under Address Information, you can view the address that's on file for your family and you can update your home phone number. The Assessments tab will show you standardized test scores. The Demographics tab will show you the emergency contacts that are listed for your children and also gives you the option to update email addresses and phone numbers for, for those contacts. Family information will allow you to update phone numbers and email addresses for all the members of your family. And GTID will show you your child's GTID. Under Quick Links, you have links to the school system and schools that your children are enrolled in, as well as a link to the state longitudinal data system, which is a system provided by the Georgia Department of Education which shows you historical information about your child as well as digital resources to help them learn. If you have any questions about the Infinite Campus Parent Portal or you have problems logging in, please contact the office staff at your child's school.